Watch this video before you start coding. Today I'm going to give you guys 10 most important tips if you have just started your coding journey. So first point that we are going to cover is complete what you could start. So I've seen a lot of people that they start a particular course, they don't complete it and in the middle of that course, they develop interest in some other course. I don't want you guys to do that because the time that you have invested in that course, it is going to get wasted. Let's say you have started a course and you have not completed that. After a few time, now you want to complete that course. So what you're going to do is you're going to start that course again and some parts you're going to connect, some parts you're not going to connect. So you're going to basically get bored when you're going to start that particular course again. So don't do that and don't jump on to multiple courses. Second tip that I'm going to give you is peer programming. So let's say yesterday I solved a particular question. I'm going to discuss that with my friends. And let's say my friend has completed some other question. They're going to discuss that with me. So what is going to happen is if I discuss a question, if I explain a question that I have solved with someone else, then that is also going to uh, increase my explanation skills. That helps a lot while in interview. And when someone else is explaining what he or she has done in the past day or in the previous week, then I'm going to gain knowledge from that as well. So peer programming is very important while you're coding. Let's move to the third tip. So third tip is about proper way to learn from tutorials. Let's say you have stuck on a question. So what you're going to do is you're going to watch a tutorial video and in that tutorial video, you are just going to basically copy paste the solution. Right? I don't want you guys to do that. What you can do is basically you can watch a video. After watching the video, just close it and then start coding. After coding, you're going to get some errors, solve those errors. And at the end, what is going to happen if you are not able to solve those errors, you can watch the video again. After watching the video, you can start coding again. Don't just copy paste it from somewhere or copy paste it from some tutorial. So let's talk about the fourth tip now. Don't learn multiple things at once. Let's say I want to learn DSA and I also want to learn development. So what I'm going to do is I can either start both of the things at the same time or I can firstly complete DSA then learn development. Now when I'm doing the development, when I'm learning development at the same time, I can also practice DSA. So practicing something while you're learning something else, it's completely fine. But don't learn two things at once. So let's jump to the fifth tip. Don't run after the certification, run after the skills. Let's say that you have completed a certification. You have added that into your resume as well as you have added the project that you have uh, gotten from that particular course. Now the same project that is going to be added by a lot of other programmers or a lot of other students as well. What you guys can do is instead of running after certification, instead of adding certificate in your resume, you can learn something from that course. And after learning, you can make your own project in your own unique way, in your own unique idea and add that into your resume because that is going to be unique and the project that they have taught in the course that is not going to be unique. So make sure to do this and not run after certification. Sixth tip for you guys is learn DSA. At the starting of your coding journey, make sure that you learn DSA at first because uh, in big MNCs, they give more priority to DSA rather than projects. Having projects is not bad, you should have projects, but you should give more priority to DSA because after learning DSA, you should have done at least 500 to 600 questions to crack big MNCs. So if you guys want to learn DSA, you can check Coding Ninja's course of data section algorithm, you can learn that in Java, C++ or Python. Seven tip is don't be afraid of failure. The more you fail now, the more you're going to win later. What I mean by that is you're going to come across a lot of bugs, a lot of errors. So if you get afraid of those errors, you're never going to solve those errors by yourself. The more errors you know, the more error you have seen, the more errors you have solved now. The later in your programming journey, let's say if you come across that error again, then you're going to solve it as soon as possible. You're not going to waste a lot of time solving that error. So the eighth tip for you guys is how to become better at problem solving. You guys should know in how many different ways we can solve a single problem. You're also going to know all of the different approaches through which we can approach a particular problem. With that, let's say in future on, you are getting a new problem. So you're going to remember all of the approaches that you have applied in that single problem. You can also try out those approaches in a new problem as well. This is going to help you guys a lot. The ninth tip that I'm going to give you guys is be active on LinkedIn and GitHub. If someone else come across your LinkedIn profile, if some recruiter come across your LinkedIn profile, he's going to watch all of your achievements and he might as well think of hiring you for their company and might as well approach you. Now GitHub is where you can upload all of your projects. You can also make those projects live. There are many companies whose projects are there and they are also open source. So what do I mean by open source? That their code is available for everyone. The tenth and the final tip that I'm going to give you guys is be flexible. 
you have to be ready to learn something new and always check out what is going on in the industry what are the new frameworks that are coming up what is happening to the old frameworks what are the updates and how they are affecting the current framework and the current industry so that's it guys i hope that you have learned a lot from these steps make sure to subscribe to coding ninja's youtube channel also if you are interested in learning anything whether it is dsa or web development or data science or machine learning you can check out those courses on coding ninja's website link for that along with the courses is been given in the description below